A new electric car has just been launched by a American Chinese electric vehicle manufacturing startup, which has had a long and sordid history in the United States, been involved with the former co-founder of Tesla. Now, this new vehicle will have a thousand kilometers of range and a 200 kilowatt hour battery and be powered by a Huawei driving and infotainment system. Now, this is a very interesting story, what has happened with this company. And if you haven't heard it, I think you might want to. Hello, my friends. Welcome to The Electric Viking. My name is Sam Evans. Fantastic to see you here on the channel. There's been a huge number increase of subscribers lately. Welcome to all of you. Welcome back to everyone else. Obviously, this is a fairly new channel, but that said, we've still created 650 videos over the last six plus months. Make sure you check some of those videos out so you get a full understanding of what's really going on in the automotive industry worldwide. There's a lot of things happening that a lot of people are not aware of. And a lot of that is happening in China, where the world's largest electric car market is currently growing in size rapidly every single month. Now, back in 2019, it was reported on the electric that Tesla original co-founder Martin Eberhard launched yet another electric vehicle battery startup, and it appeared to be extremely similar to his previous startup, which was acquired by SF Motors, who became Ceres, to help them make their own electric cars. Now, if you're not familiar with Eberhard, he founded Tesla in 2003 with his friend and business partner, Mark Tarpening, current Tesla CEO Elon Musk, and CTO JB Straubel, along with former executive Ian Wright, were all made co-founders after a judge ruling following a dispute among them after Eberhard was ousted from Tesla in 2008, and Musk later took over as CEO. Now, Eberhard has since been active in the shadows of the electric vehicle industry. And they're very shady shadows, I must say. He briefly led Volkswagen's electric vehicle development in the United States and later joined his former Tesla colleagues at competitor Ativa, now Lucid Motors, leaving in 2015. Now, after he left the company, Electric reported that he was making a comeback in the EV space with his own new startup called InEVIT, or Innovit, to develop battery packs for electric vehicles. Now, only one year later, Innovit was acquired by SF Motors, now Ceres, a China-backed EV startup, which was based in China and in America, in order to absorb their engineering talent and incorporate their battery pack technology into their own electric vehicles. So clearly, SF Motors have come along and said to Martin, we're going to pay you all this money to, give your, to take your technology, and we want to bring all your engineers and you over, and you work for us, and then we'll all make an amazing, great electric cars, right? SF Motors since unveiled some of its planned electric vehicles to hit the market. Those vehicles have not yet done so, but anyway, I'm sure they'll get there. But we now find out, well, in 2019, that Eberhard was not with the company anymore. In a new interview, he announced that he was leaving and launching a new startup. SF Motors eventually bought us out, and I joined their team soon after. But I was only at SF Motors for a short amount of time before I wanted to start something new again. Although I can't talk too much about it, I started a new company called Tavini Inc. in this space, and that's what I'm working on nowadays. He didn't elaborate on the new startup, and Tavini's website is, well, was very bare. In fact, if you click on it now, there's nothing there. There's just a page, and you can't actually go anywhere. It doesn't say anything. Who knows what's going on? Now, the weird thing is, his new company sounds extremely similar to what Innovit was working on for SF Motors before being acquired by the company. Now, the Electric did a little more research, and they found out that it is far from the only resemblance with Eberhard's previous startup. Like Innovit, Tavini is based both in the Bay Area in California and in Germany, and the German division is led by Heiner Fies, a former engineer at Bosch, who is also a co-founder of Innovit. A LinkedIn search shows that several other executives of Innovit have left SF Motors as well over the last, well, between 2018 and 2020, to join Eberhard's new startup, including Peter David, COO and CFO. Now, they've also hired former engineers from Alta Motors, an electric motorcycle startup that folded earlier in 2019. 
So it looks like what happened was Eberhard sold his battery startup to SF Motors, which obviously bought it for the engineering talent, considering it was a relatively young company and then only stayed, he only stayed for a few months before leaving with the other top executives and the engineering talent that SF Motors actually bought the company for to start another startup doing the same thing that he was doing before. Now, obviously, if your company was SF Motors, you'd have to be pretty pissed, right? Now, Eberhard and his team likely developed some kind of solid battery pack technology for SF Motors, and now they're doing it again and gonna sell it to other automakers to accelerate their electric vehicle development. Now, this probably means that there'll be more electric vehicles on the road as a result, but it does mean that Eberhard looks pretty fishy in this whole situation. Now, fast forward to 2021, and SF Motors has changed its name to Ceres. They're now headquartered in Santa Clara, California, and the company, which is a subsidiary of Chongqing Socon Industry Group, has established several R&D facilities and is in the process of designing and producing a US-based electric vehicle line. Now, the company has delayed launching a US product and has laid off hundreds of workers, including 90 people at its design studio. At the same time, the company is actually partnering with a number of automotive and tech suppliers, including Huawei. Now that leads us to Ceres' first car, the Ato M5, which has a 200 kilowatt hour battery and 1,000 kilometers of range. Now, this seems to me to be an enormous battery. If you look, look at the size of the car, it looks like a similar size to around about a Tesla Model Y or a Porsche Macan, and yet a 200 kilowatt hour battery is somehow stuffed into that base of that car. That is enormous. The fact that it's only got a thousand kilometer range seems to be fairly, well, you would think that maybe the range would be a bit better than that, but maybe that's a real world range. And if that is a real world range, then I'm sure they'll have a lot of buyers wanting to purchase this car. So what's the plan? Well, Ceres will take care of the manufacturing and Huawei will supply the car's brains and the smart parts that make it go. Now, although the Huawei CEO claims that they will never make a car, they're getting kind of close to it in a way, aren't they? On December the 2nd, Ceres launched a brand named Ato in cooperation with Huawei. Ato is an acronym for adding intelligence to auto. Huawei contributed its newest technology to the car, including the Harmony operating system. Now, as you all know, a huge part of why electric cars are so much further ahead than ICE vehicles is because they run on much more advanced computer systems. And obviously with Huawei driving this car, I have two questions here. What will it be like? What will the experience be like? Will it be better? I think it could potentially be better than other electric cars as a result. But also, aren't Huawei going through some issues with legality in, in the United States? If this vehicle will be sold in the United States, how will that go down? Now, there are reports that in China, where this vehicle is already manufactured, is actually sold in Huawei stores. Now, when Huawei started selling Series SF5 electric vehicles in its stores in April, they got apparently 3,000 pre-orders in only two days. Now, surprised from this demand, Series had to announce that deliveries would be delayed due to overwhelming demand. They just weren't in position to be able to manufacture a whole lot of them. They thought they'd only get a few orders. Now, apparently, Ceres will show more details of the vehicle's features, specifications, everything else that we need to know on December the 23rd. And I'm intrigued, excited, and kind of fascinated to see what will happen with this company, because obviously the plan was for them to manufacture these in America and in China. Now, we know they're already manufacturing them in China, but we haven't heard any word on what's happening in the United States. If anyone knows more about what's happening with this company, let me know in the comment section below or send me an email. I'd be interested to know. Thanks for watching the video. Look forward to seeing you again on the next one. Bye-bye.